story time about how my wife is trying to turn herself into Kim Kardashian with plastic surgery. She even acts and dresses like Kim Kardashian. Disclaimers is not my story time. I sent me on Instagram. My wife has always been a beautiful woman, but ever since 2016, she started talking about getting plastic surgery. Of course, I supported the idea. We are both business owners and we lack no money. She even looked at the plastic surgeon that Kim Kardashian uses and we went to visit him in Beverly Hills. He told my wife that with three surgeries, he could make her look like Kim Kardashian. When I heard three surgeries, I got really scared and tried to talk her out of it, but she was obsessed and said that she would do the surgery. I had no choice but to just support her. We stayed in Los Angeles for two weeks in a hotel while she recovered. Four months after her surgery, she was really happy with the results, but then she started changing her face. And this is where I started to put my foot down. She began to get all sorts of fillers in her face. She even did that thing where they lift the corners of your eyes and your eyebrows. By the end of the year, she had spent over a hundred grand on surgeries. She basically got her whole body done. I will admit her body did look amazing, but the face was the problem for me. The woman I fell in love with was not the woman that she was anymore. Her lips were ginormous. It was like kissing a pair of balloons. Part two is up. Part two of how my wife is trying to turn herself into Kim Kardashian with plastic surgery. Disclaimer is not my story time. I sent me on Instagram. After she started getting all the fillers to her face, it really changed and she did look different. And I didn't like it. Her lips were way too big. It got to the point where I was actually embarrassed to take her around my parents' house. Like I said in part one, her body looked amazing, but her face just wasn't it. I told my parents about how I felt and they told me I should just be honest with her. So I explained to my wife that I didn't like her new face. I asked her if she could get some of the filler dissolved, not all of it, and she totally flipped out. She said I was being selfish and insensitive, so I had to drop the conversation. But things started to get even worse. She started getting a lot of attention from men. Everywhere we'd go, guys would stare at her and she would constantly get hit on, even in front of me. I'm not the type of guy to get into fights like that, but I was really close sometimes. Like I said, she also started dressing like Kim Kardashian. She would buy all the clothes from Skims and she would basically wear lingerie out to dinner. I asked her if she could put on a jacket once and she told me that I didn't understand her fashion. This is when she also started posting a lot to Instagram. Her Instagram was growing really quickly and all she kept posting were thirst traps. Once again, I asked her if she could take down some of her posts, but she said no. She obviously enjoyed all the attention and this made me really insecure. I asked her if there was something that was lacking in our relationship, but of course she said no. One day she got a DM from a very famous athlete asking her to go out. She joked about having an open relationship and how much better her life would be if she was single. This cut me deep. Part 3 is up. Part three of how my wife is trying to turn herself into Kim Kardashian with plastic surgery. Disclaimer is not my story time I sent me on Instagram. After she started getting DMs from all these athletes, my insecurity got so bad that I asked her to close her Instagram. Then one day out of nowhere, she asked me if we could have an open relationship. Of course I said no. Then she threw a tantrum and told me that all her surgery would go to waste if she wasn't able to date other men, especially all the famous people that were sliding into her DMs. I couldn't believe what she was saying. I felt like I had to agree to the open relationship, otherwise she would leave me. Now she goes on dates with all these athletes. One of them even flew her out to New York. My parents and family want me to get a divorce, but I don't want to. I still love her and after all, she's my wife. Now she's even buying all the designer clothes that Kim Kardashian posts on her Instagram. If you looked at her Instagram, you'd think you were looking at Kim Kardashian. A few days ago, she ripped my heart out by telling me that she didn't want children. She had worked too hard and paid too much money for her body and she didn't want to ruin it now. That's when I grabbed her phone and took it away from her. I locked myself in the bathroom and deleted her Instagram account. I even deleted all the male contacts in her phone. I told her I'd cut her off financially if she doesn't start behaving again. My family thinks I'm becoming too obsessed with her, but I don't want to let her go. Now she's not talking to me because of the whole Instagram thing. I also threw away all of her her skims clothes. Part of me thinks I should just let her do whatever she wants and still stay with her. I love her too much. What should I do? Am I the asshole for fake sleeping all night to see if my wife is lying? The past couple of months, my wife has been complaining about our cats. She's been claiming that the cats wake her up constantly and that she's frustrated every night that she has to get up and open the door for the cats. Or the cats keep making noises or the cats keep jumping on her. It got me to the point where she started saying she wants me to get rid of them. I've told her I've never seen or heard any of this, but she claims I sleep through it all. She kept telling me that she was getting less and less sleep and kept acting aggressive, blaming lack of sleep from the cats and that if I didn't get rid of them, she'd leave me. I legitimately started considering giving the cats to my sister until I noticed something. One morning, she claimed she had gotten up multiple times throughout the night to help the cats. She listed a bunch of times. I thought it was weird because I had been up until 4 a.m. and she claimed that she got up at 1 a.m. to open the door for them and a few times around 3 a.m. because they were meowing and jumping on her. I was in the bedroom the entire time while she slept and I know none of this happened. Things were adding up so I decided to run a test. I waited until she said she was going to bed, then I let the cats out of our bedroom. I lowered my phone brightness and faked going to sleep. I just laid there in my bed for the entire night bored, but I definitely did not fall asleep. I made sure to make timestamps every 30 minutes on my phone through Discord just to be sure. I marked down every noise my cats made. One cat had jumped down from something and made a little noise around 3.18 a.m. and one ate food relatively quietly by the bedroom door at 4.57 a.m. Other than that, nothing happened. Sure enough, my wife slept from 11 p.m. until 9 a.m. and that morning she claimed she had woken up at least seven times to open doors from the cat noises and cats jumping on her. At this point, I was pissed because she was clearly lying to me. I was exhausted and fed up with a lie so I bluntly called her out on it. 
I told her, that's funny. I stayed up all night to monitor the cats and they weren't even in the room at all last night. I have timestamps and everything. So you've been lying to me and trying to convince me to get rid of my cats. Why? She just sat there quietly shaking and looking pissed, then got up and left without answering. She came back hours later and ignored me whenever I talked. And when I asked her how I'm the bad guy in the situation, she finally said that I was treating her like a child by lying about sleeping and staying up all night just to see if she was lying or not. And that making timestamps and everything as if I was an investigator was going too far and makes me an obsessive asshole. I did it because she was threatening to make me get rid of the cats or she'd leave me and her claims didn't add up. So am I the obsessive asshole here? Story time, my dad got my half-brother's girlfriend pregnant. A little background information. This all happened a few years ago. Anyways, my brother was fresh out of high school and he had been dating this girl named Serena for two years. And my dad, for some reason, hated her. At least that's what we thought. Well, my brother didn't have a license at the time, so every time that she came over, she needed somebody to drop her off at home. So my dad would always offer to drop her off at home, even though he literally hated her. And he could have just ordered her an Uber. Which is what he did with all of my friends. Well, the one night her parents called and they were like, Hey, like, is Serena still there? She hasn't came home yet. And my dad said that he was dropping her off. So I called my dad and he said that they ran out of gas on the side of the road. So that was just like one incident. Well, the next morning my mom goes to get in the car for work. And she finds a thong in the car. So she brings it in the house and she asks me, Hey, is this yours? Meanwhile, I had never seen them before. So then she goes and asks my half-brother and my dad's whose they are. Like for part two. Part two about how my dad got my half-brother's girlfriend pregnant. So like I said, my mom found that thong in the car. She came and asked me if it was mine. I said no. So then she asked my dad and my brother whose they were. So she asked my dad first. He said, I don't know whose they are. He said they probably just fell out of Serena's bag. And then she asked my brother. And my brother said, oh, those are Serena's. So after that, my brother came in my room. And he was like, do you think it's weird that the same underwear that Serena was wearing before she left ended up in the car. So I guess she had the underwear on literally before she fucking left the house. Dumb bitch alert. Anyway, so a few weeks later, Serena breaks up with my brother. Well, around the same time, my dad started staying after work really late, like every day of the week. But long story short, my mom went through his phone because she felt like something was going on and she reads a conversation between my dad and Serena. Like, oh, I'm so sad that you couldn't come to the ultrasound. So then my mom and him divorced and he's currently raising his child with Serena. Story time about how I was sexually harassed twice while working at Walmart. So a little background information. This all happened last year. So originally I was working at a warehouse, but whenever COVID hit, lost my job, I had to get a new job. So I applied at Walmart in the electronics section because they paid more money, period. And on my second day, I finally went and started working in electronics. So they had asked some of the employees to show me around. So while this one employee was showing me around, he took me to the back where the photos were. Well, whenever I got back there, this employee named Terry said, oh, she's mine. I just laughed and brushed it off because I felt super uncomfortable and awkward. And he knew I was underage because my name tag was yellow. But even after that, he still kept coming up to me, calling me weird names, just being a total creep. Like he would keep coming up to me and get super close to me to the point where I could literally feel him fucking breathing on my face. So of course I told my manager about it. They said he's done this before, so I was like, why the fuck is he still here? So they moved me to garden. And while I was working in the gardening section, I met this guy named Jordan. Like for a part two. Part two of how I was sexually harassed twice while working at Walmart. Something I forgot to mention in the first part, I reported Terry several times and they still did nothing about it. So like I said, then I met this kid Jordan, him and I started getting close, and work actually started to become fun. Well, finally, after a month, we decided that we were going to go out to lunch during work. So the day that we went out to lunch, he kept telling me that he needed to tell me something. But he was like beating around the bush the whole time. Like for some reason, he just couldn't get out what he wanted to tell me. But then he kept trying to change the subject like he wasn't the one who brought it up in the first place. I should have took that as a red flag before we went to lunch, but I didn't. So he keeps going on about it in the car, right? And then he's like, I'm not really 20. I'm 25 turning 26. So then for some reason after that, whenever he saw my mood change, this guy has the audacity to start touching my legs, fucking rubbing my inner thigh and shit. I kept telling him to stop. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? So then I told him I'm getting out of the car. And he says, I'm not going to let you like for part three. Part three of how I got sexually harassed twice while working at Walmart. So like I said, he wouldn't let me out of the car, but then we got back to work. And then he had the audacity to keep asking if I was okay when he literally just sexually harassed me in the car. So I went to the bathroom, literally had a whole fucking mental breakdown. I called my mom to come get me because I was not going to stay there. So the next time that I went back to work, I grabbed my stuff and I gave it to one of the workers to go and give to a manager and tell them that I was quitting. Well, one of the managers caught me walking out the back door and she was like, what's wrong? So I immediately broke down. I started telling her what was going on. And then a crowd of people came around us being nosy as fuck, listening to what I was saying. And she was like, you're not quitting. I'm going to take care of this. 
So she sent me home and she said that she would call me whenever it was taken care of. So two days goes past. I'm like, why the fuck hasn't she called? So then I call and I found out that she fired me. So I reported everything to Walmart ethic team and they just closed my case. They basically didn't do shit about it. Oh, and Jordan wasn't really a manager. He was a supervisor. Should I try to take this to court? Am I the asshole for wanting to sue my husband's sister for losing my $2,000 camera at the beach? My 26 female sister-in-law, 20 female, moved in with me and my husband weeks ago because of problems with her boyfriend. She isn't planning on going back till he apologizes, even though she broke his Xbox device in an argument. I'm a blogger. I have a small space in our apartment, sort of like my office, but very small, where I work for hours. Sister-in-law always enters the room and takes stuff and doesn't return them, resulting in me replacing them till I got a lock. She was going to the beach with some friends to let off some steam and asked if she could borrow my 2K video camera to record the trip, but I declined and explained that I was working on the weekend and would need it. I got done with my project and left my camera at the desk. When I woke up, the next day at 9 a.m. and had a shower then breakfast, I entered my office and didn't find my camera. I freaked out and my husband told me to calm down because his sister took it with her to the beach. He assured me it was in safe hands, but I kept worrying about it and was upset by the fact she took it and he gave her the key. She got back at 7 p.m. and was pissed, talking about getting in a fight with her boyfriend after seeing him with someone else at the beach and it ruined her day. She started crying loudly and cussing him out. I asked for my camera back. She said she didn't have it. She left angry after the encounter and forgot her sunglasses, cream, hat, and my camera at the beach. Her friend picked some of the stuff and brought it back, but the camera apparently got stolen. Mm. I started yelling, calling her irresponsible and reckless, and this was a $2,000 camera she left behind. She started apologizing then tried to blame it on her now ex-boyfriend for getting her into a fight with the girl he was with. I said, I need the camera for my work, and she had to replace it, like yesterday. My husband got involved and said it wasn't her fault it got stolen and suggested I get a cheaper camera from Amazon for now till I can afford to buy a new one. Why should I buy a replacement when it was his sister who lost it? He tried to make excuses for her being an emotional mess. I said, I have no problem suing her. He asked if I was serious, and I said, Yes. He said he was just trying to help fix the problem, but I said he was just helping his sister avoid responsibility. Yep. Both him and his sister aren't speaking to me anymore, claiming they're giving me time to calm down when in fact they're cold shouldering me, making me feel guilty for saying that. I'm not sure if doing this will be morally the right thing since she's family, as my husband says. Am I the asshole? Clearly no. Sewer ass. There's clearly an asshole though. Wow, this one's maddening. We never lie, we never lie, we never lie, never lie, we never lie, we never lie, we never lie, never Am I the asshole for telling my in-laws exactly where my husband was when I went into labor? I gave birth to my son 10 weeks ago and I went through an exhausting period while I was nearing my due date. I wanted my husband by my side when I went into labor, but he'd go out every night to hang out at his friend's place and watch football games. I suggested they watch the games at home just in case, but he was having none of it. That he had to attend game night there and that they had a certain, how do I describe it, ritual when watching a game and he can't enjoy it at home or anywhere else. The night of our son's birth, my water broke while my husband was at his buddy's place watching a game. I called him and told him to take me to the hospital and he said he was coming, but he didn't. I ended up calling my sister. Am I the asshole for telling my in-laws exactly where my husband was when I went into labor? My husband showed up two hours later and kept asking if I was still in labor and that he was almost done watching the game. He made it for the birth, but I was furious with him, mad and disappointed. He's been working on regaining my trust and respect for him after what he's done, and he's been really supportive in our son's care. Last night, I was at my in-law's house for dinner, and we were talking about my son's birthday. My husband lied about driving me to the hospital, waiting and feeling stressed out. 
said none of that was true when he was watching a game when I went into labor. Also that I wanted him to drive me to the hospital, but he didn't show up till two hours later. Everyone kept saying, shame on you, shame on you. Am I the asshole for refusing to let my family meet my daughter? I come from a conservative Christian family. All my family members are involved in the church and have church-based jobs. When they met my wife, they loved her and embraced her as their own. We dated for two years and discovered she was pregnant after we got engaged. Invitations were already given at the time and we decided to have the wedding on the date that my wife was five months in. My family were furious when they found out my wife was pregnant and asked if we even still considered having a wedding. I said why not, but they were very upset, especially my mom and dad. They said they've always been known for their decency and good Christian values and weren't willing to let this stain their reputation. They dropped out and refused to negotiate, saying I was to blame. Am I the asshole for refusing to let my family meet my daughter? They said I was to blame and should even move the wedding out of town. I then checked with fellow family members. My brother said he didn't want to look like a joke, my aunt pretended to be sick, my cousin said he had a business trip, and my uncle cussed me out, tore the invitation, and kicked me out. I felt terrible with no family members of my own to support me and even broke down during the ceremony. I haven't spoken to them for months and have been busy with my four-week-old daughter. My cousin reached out to me to hand me gifts and well wishes for the birth of my daughter sent from my family. I returned everything. He said I shouldn't have returned the gifts and that everyone wants to be in my daughter's life. I said, wasn't my daughter the reason the entire family abandoned the wedding? Am I the asshole for telling my dad that he's an effing man-child for refusing to deal with my sister's first period? My parents are divorced and my mom lives about two hours away from my dad, his fiance, and my sister. This weekend I visited home and stayed with my dad and sister. I get home at around 7 in the morning and see my dad off to work and my sister off to school. At around noon, I wake up to a phone call from my mom telling me that I need to go pick my sister up from school. I ask what's going on and she tells me that my sister started her period and left her go bag at her place. I say okay, get in my car, lay down some stuff and start heading to her school. On the way I get a call from my dad and I'm told not to worry about it and go home. I'm then told that my dad's fiance will take care of it. Am I the asshole for telling my dad he's an effing man child? He tells me I'm a man and don't need to handle it and I should let a woman handle a woman's problem. I'm dumbfounded but hey if his fiance is on her way over I get to sleep again. I ask how long it'll be and he says these exact words. She gets up at 3 and the school will give her new pants for the time being. Which is crazy. I tell him that's ridiculous and I'm going to pick her up. He tells me no and I said I'm going to get my sister and hang up before he argues. I take her to the store and buy her some pads and tampons and I also get her food. We get home and I tell her to wake me if she needs anything. I wake up to banging on the door and it's my dad. He said I defied him by taking care of my sister and that it's disgusting that I bought her stuff for her sexual health. He said he's acting like an effing man child. He goes off and kicks me out. My mom said I shouldn't have said it. Am I the asshole for acting unhappy at me and my wife's gender reveal? My wife is seven months pregnant and it came as a complete surprise as my wife had been taking birth control regularly. We originally planned to not have any kids, but my wife changed her mind after her first ultrasound. I respected her decision even if I wasn't the happiest about it and I told her that regardless I wasn't going to force her to make a decision. We had a gender party late because of issues with the pandemic, but we finally got around to it. I already was not happy given the circumstances that I did not want to have any children. I still participated to show support to my wife though. Once the gender reveal happened, everyone including my wife was ecstatic. She went to hug me and I hugged her back, just not with the same energy. Am I the asshole for acting unhappy at me and my wife's gender reveal? She looked at me with a concerned face, but went off to hug some of her other friends and family. Once it was over and we got everything put up, she blew up at me. She said I embarrassed her in front of her family and the least I could have done was pretended that I cared. I told her I didn't see a point in throwing a party just because of the gender, but she wanted to do it, so I agreed. She said she understood that I really didn't want to have a baby, but said that since they were almost here, I should probably lose the attitude already. I said that since she knew that I didn't want the baby, she shouldn't be surprised I wasn't enjoying the baby shower. She thought that the shower would change my mind. I'm not going to apologize for showing my emotions and I need time to adjust. Am I the asshole for kicking my sister out of my house after she laughed at my husband for having breast cancer? My husband, John, 41, was diagnosed with stage 2 breast cancer August of this year. It had been hard for us and John had difficulty accepting the diagnosis as he can't believe a man can have this type of cancer. He felt both embarrassed and isolated. It took a toll on my mental health and I was diagnosed with depression. Last Saturday, we invited our family to share the unfortunate news. We agreed that telling them our circumstances can only help us accept our situation. After dinner, when John told everyone his diagnosis, both our parents empathized and offered their support. My sister said maybe the cancer cells got confused because you have huge man boobs. Am I the asshole for kicking my sister out of my house after she laughed at my husband for having breast cancer? 
My sister Judy, 26, made a joke and said maybe the cancer cells got confused because you have huge man boobs. Dad called her out and I took her to the kitchen. I told her she was being insensitive and cruel to make a joke about my husband. She said I'm blowing it out of proportion as she was just trying to lighten the mood. I got angry with her because instead of apologizing, she made excuses and called me too sensitive. I told her to get out of my house and I won't be talking to her anymore unless she apologizes to me and especially to John. She had to leave at 10 p.m. and she called an Uber. When my mom found out, she got upset and said that I overreacted. Am I the asshole for telling my sister to expect to go to school tomorrow with no friends? I, 17 female, have a little sister, 14, who's extremely spoiled. She doesn't like to share, she hates not getting her way, and most of all, she throws tantrums when told no. My parents refuse to address her behavior, so it continues. Today was the first time in years my sister had friends to hang out, and my mom got tons of snacks. My sister grabbed most of them, and one girl wanted gummy bears. My sister said no, but she had three bags, so I gave one of hers to her friend. She dropped all of hers on the ground. Am I the asshole for telling my sister to expect to go to school tomorrow with no friends? Started stomping her feet, whining about wanting them all. My dad made me give it back to her, so I gave her some fruit snacks instead. Then they were looking for a movie to watch, and the two girls agreed on one, but my sister wanted to watch a different movie. When I told her it was only fair that the girls got to pick, she got upset and went to tell again. Both girls said they wanted to go home, and my dad took them. I said if she continues to act this way, she'll never have friends and expect to go to school tomorrow with none. She cried and my dad said I was out of line. Am I the asshole for telling my husband I'll stop locking the bathroom door when he stops barging in? My husband's been barging into the bathroom lately when I'm inside and for no reason. I tell him I was going to use the bathroom, then a couple of minutes later he barged in and asked what I was doing. He already knows I'm peeing and it's not like I'm taking too long for him to be worried. He said that it was no big deal and that he was checking in on me even though I've only been gone for two minutes. I'm a private person and I don't like being walked in on in the bathroom, so I asked him to please stop. He said fine, but did it again yesterday. We had an argument about how he kept disrespecting my privacy. He brushed me off, so the next time I locked the door. He tried to barge in and I kept him waiting. He said I'm your husband, not your roommate. Why lock the door? Am I the asshole for removing my baby's earrings immediately after my wife pierced them? My wife and I have a two-month-old daughter, Alicia, and we've been having the piercing debate since before she was born. She comes from a culture where it's the normal thing, but I'm just not comfortable with the painful process like that and would prefer to wait until she's older so she can choose. While we still hadn't made a decision, my wife went for a day with her family with the baby while I had a few things I needed to sort out. When I got home, the first thing I noticed was that Alicia had a pair of gold studs. I asked what happened and she said they decided to make a day of it and just got them done. I felt pure rage and immediately removed the earrings and threw them away. This enraged my wife and she said removing them was disrespectful. She slept in the spare room and isn't talking to me, but I think I did the right thing. Am I the asshole for evoking my husband's access to my bank account? My husband and I have been married for three years and we have two separate bank accounts, but both of us know the info of each other's bank accounts. My husband's working a good job and makes a lot of money. I'm on pregnancy leave, but also have a good job as an optometrist. I also have a lot of savings. Recently, I found out my husband got money out of my bank account around 3k to lend to his brother. His brother has a job but refuses to spend his own money. Apparently, he owed some people 3 k and despite the fact that he had it in his bank account, he asked my husband for money. He took it from my account without asking, so I confronted him. My in-law said I'm entitled to make a big deal over 3 k I revoked his access to my bank account. Am I the asshole for not paying to change my father's gravely insulting gravestone? My father and mother had a very bitter marriage towards the end of his life. He had a long-running affair with another married co-worker and got her pregnant before he passed. He was planning to leave my mom, skip the country, and move to Canada to start a new life with her. They had a house picked out and all. He moved out and was living with his coworker when he suddenly died of a heart attack while having nasty time. Divorce papers were never filed, no legal separation. On paper, they were still married. My siblings are already out of home, but I'm visiting helping my mom manage his estate. My mom was hurt and petty and marked his gravestone as in loving memory of John Doe's son, husband, father, and adulterer. Am I the asshole for refusing to drop out of my ex's family vacation after his fiance asked me to? My ex was in an open relationship but failed to inform me until after I got pregnant. His fiance and her family tried to convince me to have an abortion but it wasn't what I wanted so now I co-parent with my ex. Our son is two but he's only met a few members of his paternal family due to them living in different countries. My ex and his family asked if I will my ex and his family asked me if I would be willing to bring them to meet them during their family vacay. His fiance made a big show of telling me how excited she was for the trip and for us to be on it. A few days ago, she came to see me alone and asked me to drop out of the trip. She said my son stole her future child's rifle place and that I owe her. I said no, this is good for my son. I need to really
really need to let you know Regret's been my friend too long Too long, too long So fine, oh Karma's a beach so blue Where the waves come back to you Always back to you Can feel sand between my toes Something from Jack Sparrow Let me try to explain, oh Let me try to explain, oh I came here to drink it all away, still drink it all away, swear I'm not lying. Then I saw you sitting over there, it's been a couple years, hey what's up with you tonight? Baby, numero, puedo tener la tuya, so then, cause you see, it should've been you, should've been me, it should've been us for life. 